This is the Earth Russell Show, featuring highlights of Georgia Southern Football 88. Brought to you by Hardee's. We're out to win you over. By Eastern Airlines. We earn our wings every day. By Franklin Chevrolet of Statesboro, home of the Franklin value. And by Coastal Bank, your personal financial expert. And now here's WJCL sports analyst Bill Edwards. Welcome to season six of the Eric Russell Show for the 1988 season and um, a, a somewhat uh, familiar setting. It looks familiar, Eric. Or is, is this actually Paulson Stadium? It's beginning to come back now, Bill. It's been a long time since we've been here and it's just great to be able to sleep in our dormitory, get up and eat a pregame meal, dress in our own dressing room and be where we're going to be in just 10 minutes. Uh, as I told our players yesterday, though, there's not anything magic about playing at home. Um, we can't any begin to think about just playing at home as being an advantage. Uh, the advantage is that we'll have the crowd. We'll have our crowd today. We had that easy trip. Those things can be construed as advantages, but we've got to put those blue hats on and use them like they're meant to be used. Otherwise, it's just another game. And this bunch has a really good football team. Don't let three and three deceive you. It's, um, they played some good teams. They have been somewhat inconsistent, but so have we. And we've got to play our best game because they're the best 1AA school that we face so far. These are the guys who are defending national champions. They beat us last year. Uh, they took our title. Uh, hopefully our, our people are thinking payback. We did a good job of thinking that way when we played Florida a &M. We got a great day. We got a great crowd. We have every reason to play well. Uh, one thing that's continue to bug me is the praise that our players, our group has received for having played a good game last week. Hopefully we got rid of that uh, at least by Tuesday and now uh, hopefully we've concentrated all we can on Northeast Louisiana. Having played a, such a good game last week, Irk, or such an emotional high, do you worry that they might be flat today, that there could be a problem there? I think you can carry over uh, with the same emotion uh, two weeks in a row. Um, I'd like to think that we can carry it over as many weeks as we have to. And, Bill, we have no assurance if we lose this game that we have a chance to make the playoff. Uh, we'd like to keep things as they are in the loss, col in the loss column because we don't know after 11 games have been played how many games, how many teams are going to be eight and three or seven and four, nine and two or whatever. So we've got to ensure ourselves by playing hard today and hopefully winning this football game. Now things look on the training table. Everybody okay? Or? Yeah, uh, Joe Ross probably is not going to play much. His hand is broke a bone in his hand last week. It swelled to the extent that it's hard for him to grip the ball. Uh, we're going to evaluate that again, but Gary Miller will start the game, and uh, Lester Eford, uh, our other be back, uh, may see plenty of action too. Okay, good luck. I know it's going to be a good one. Thank you, Bill. I hope it is. I hope everybody sees a good game. Gosh, I hope we win. <laughs> I do see you later. <laughs> okay, and we'll show you the first half highlights of the Northeast Louisiana game right after this. Having a baby can be the most exciting event of a woman's life. The joy is equally shared with the expected father, siblings, relatives, and friends. This is Melanie Hutchings. I'm expecting my first baby, and I'm discovering pregnancy is indeed a special time filled with many new experiences. Join News 24 for the Stork Report. We'll examine the many stages of pregnancy from prenatal care like exercising to shopping for maternity wear to delivery day. The Superior Court Casebook, filled with passion. I didn't want to hurt Hugo. I still love him. Greed, 
He stole half a million dollars from my company. Hate. He made his bed. Let him lie in it. Revenge. Her lies resulted in a malicious prosecution. Each individual case, a new chapter in emotional conflict. Superior Court. To get the most out of your outdoor plans, tune in to Dan Schmidt, Middle Georgia's only television meteorologist. Whether you're planning to work in the yard, cook out with friends, take a weekend trip, or just catch a few rays, Dan takes the guesswork out of weather with a forecast you can count on. So before you make plans that will take you outdoors, make sure you turn to 24 meteorologist Dan Schmidt for accurate weather information. Only on News 24, Middle Georgia's news leader. The Statesboro version of Oktoberfest got started off with an artsy-craftsy kickoff return, first taken by Jeff Steele, who gave it off to Cisco Richard. But when this Cisco met Randall Boone, he looked like nothing more than a kid. The Indians moved rapidly toward midfield before the Southern Cavalry made its first stand, starting by scalping 11 yards off the Northeast Louisiana offensive uprising, sacking quarterback Doug Peterson. Then trying to avoid the Eagle Rush, led by a very welcome sight, number 67, Charlie Waller. Welcome back, Charlie. Peterson cocked and fired in desperation. Randall Boone tipped it, and Everett Sharp picked it off at the reservation's 43. Coach Ross has been telling me all week I need to make the play. I haven't been playing that well this season. I realized I had to get up and start being a leader around here. And today I saw the opportunity to make the play, so I took advantage of it. And it didn't take the Eagle Express long to take advantage either. On second and eight, Raymond Gross on a keeper for 10. And on the ensuing play, Raymond had E.T. phone home. With a pitch to Ernest Thompson on the right corner, and thanks to two terrific blocks from Carl Miller and Ross Warsham, E.T. was off at warp factor five to the next galaxy, 31 yards away. Seven nothing, good guys. In the second quarter, no sooner had the Eagles forced the Indians to punt when a quarterback mistake led to Northeast Louisiana's first score. Raymond Gross got hemmed in, hit, and the ball popped loose. The Indians were in business at the enemy 36. The major chunk of real estate in the drive came when Doug Peterson hit Jeff Steele with a 35-yard toss to the Southern one. Now, you didn't think we could really get through a game without a little controversy, did you? As freshman safety Jim Muttimer appeared to intercept a Peterson pass, one official thought so too but was overruled when some others said Jim didn't have control before he went out of bounds. Two plays later, a pitch to Steele was good for six the easy way. And then the Indians decided to try for two. Who knows why? It worked like a witch doctor's potion, and Southern was down eight to seven with a long time to go. From there, neither team could muster much offense, but it sure looked like NLU was on their way to a bigger halftime lead when Jeff Steele fielded Terry Harvin's booming, beautiful 50-yard punt and then proceeded to take it 52 yards in the opposite direction. Thank Michael West for saving the touchdown. Turns out West's contribution was significant indeed, because on third and eight, this cavalry charge, led by freshman Michael Berry, dropped Peterson 17 yards further upfield than when the play began. The top of the day was to make the big play. So we went out there and made the big play. Had a lot of good uh, pass breakups, two interceptions by uh, Ever Sharp, and the defense just playing tremendously well. Truer words were never spoken. As the half was coming to a close, the Eagles dodged another arrow when a 43-yard field goal attempt sailed right of the mark. Moments later, on second and five from their own 33, Raymond dumped an innocent-looking pass off to Carl Miller. He split the defense, kicked in the afterburners, and it turned out to be as innocent as a nuclear warhead reaching critical mass. That was a very designed play. We practiced on it during the week. We felt like that, that would be a hole in their defense, and uh, the safety either had to take me or take the wide out, and he made a decision. Either way it'd go, it would go, the possibility of a big play occurring was still there. When you looked around and didn't see anything ahead of you but the goal line, uh, did, did uh, you think you were going to make it? Yeah, I was running very hard, but I heard footsteps behind <laughs> me. I thought they were very close, and I continued to push, 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 and try and run faster and faster. Yeah, uh, they were rolling the corners up real hard, and, you know, the only guy that could get to the 
the vertical route, the A-back going down the, the hash was uh, the, the weak safety, and he just didn't get there, and Carl really turned it on to get into the end zone. And two can play at this two-point conversion stuff, too, uh, also. Ernest Thompson wanted to pass for it at first, then spotted a crease in the Indian defense, and the Eagles were up 15-8 to eight going to the locker room. And when we come back, meet the opposition's head man, Pat Collins, after this timeout. America's most important critics are raving about ABC's newest daytime show, Home. Finally, an interesting, helpful show. I'm telling my friends to watch. Home treats women like they have a brain. Keep up the good work. Good ideas and touches the heart. Rob and Sandy are delightful. <laughs> I've learned so much and enjoyed every minute of it. I am hooked. Join Sandy Hill and Rob Weller weekday mornings for Home. Get to know Melanie Hutchings. To me, being part of the News 2014 means working for you, our viewers. By tuning in, you're saying you trust us to bring you the news in a way you can understand and in a way that's meaningful to your life. We don't take that trust lightly, and we're working to continue to earn that trust each and every day. Melanie Hutchings and News 24, earning your trust every day. Now, more than ever. I don't know how to talk to men unless, you know, I'm seducing. There is practically no such thing as an airline pilot who doesn't drink. Sexual abuse has risen a thousand percent. Everyone is afraid of getting it. Because no one wants to die. We as a nation are abusing these drugs. We have an epidemic of bulimia in our young children in this country. Ovarian cancer is very much a silent disease. You can't afford to miss a minute. Our magazine. Weekdays at 10 a.m. on WGXA. I haven't had that much experience saying no to women. I mean, the closest I've ever come is not now, we're landing. The point is, all the babes say I'm terrific, so how come Diane says my IQ wouldn't add up to a respectable earthquake? She makes me lose my mind. I can hear her now. Sam, dear, how can you lose your mind? You don't have one. Well, I do know one thing. Cheers is on five times a week, and that gives me five times the chance to get even. Weeknights, following the News 24 Late Report. We know from our perspective now that the Georgia Southern Eagles plastered the Northeast Louisiana Indians, but at halftime it was an entirely different matter. The familiar strains of Steam's 1960s classic Na Na Hey Hey, the 1988 remake courtesy of the Sigma News here, now seems appropriate. But we led by only seven points at halftime, thanks to that pass from Raymond Gross to Carl Miller. That made it 15 to 8. And halftime guest, Coach Pat Collins of Northeast Louisiana, gives us his thoughts on the game afterward. Well, you know, we were having some real problems trying to move the football against Georgia Southern, and I've got to give them an awful lot of credit for that. I think Coach Russell and his staff did a super job of preparing their football team from a defensive standpoint for us. Uh, you know, we, uh, we had a lot of near misses, you know, and things of that sort, and, uh, missed opportunities. Uh, that I think would have kept us in the football game. And then, of course, you know, in the mid part of the third quarter, you know, you could see it begin to slip away. And so we began to do a lot of gambling defensively, trying to make some things happen to get that football back. And, of course, when you do that, you know, you're going you're to be susceptible to giving up the big play, and that's what happened. It seems that, uh, that this, I don't think the final score was certainly indicative of the way your, your kids played today. They came in here and defending national champs, and, of course, you, you, you have a lot to prove. And well, the last two defending national champs, as a matter of fact, and uh, it just it looked like it was just a classic matchup. Well, it was. I think Georgia Southern proved today they were the best football team on the field. I don't think there's any question about that. Uh, you know, I think the thing that makes me feel good about our kids is the fact that, you know, you can always just shut it down, you know, and I don't think they did that. You know, I think we did some things to try to make some things happen and, uh, you know, kind of let it get out of hand, you know, with all the scoring and so forth. But uh, they're a good football team, and, uh, you know, I've been having to draw a few comparisons today, you know, with, uh, you know, for some people about Georgia Southern, how good I think they are. 
in, in comparison with North Texas. You know, I think that uh, Georgia Southern is a better defensive football team than, than North Texas. I think the kicking game, uh, I think North Texas may have a slight edge there, but I think both teams have excellent offenses, and I think it just depends on the kind of defense you go against as to how they're going to match up with people. Well, Coach, I know that uh, I know that things have been, you've had a few disappointments this season, but I know that uh, you've got a great program going on down there, and uh, have a good trip back. We'll look forward to keeping you on the schedule. All right. Well, I'd love to stay on it because I think it's a great rivalry. I think it's a good ball game for both schools, and, you know, the one thing about Georgia Southern, you don't have to worry about whether or not they're going to be good because they're always going be good so that it's not hard to get your kids ready to play a game like that okay, okay. Right. pat collins head coach at northeast louisiana state university and we'll be back with the second half highlights after this i'm from a town where things are as good as they come And it's pictured in my mind Just as clear as the midday sun Excuse me. Who, me? Yes, you, Don. When was the last time you took your wife out? Are you sure you got the right Don? Hey, come on. Yeah, when did you last take Sally somewhere? Just the two of you. Oh, I took her to a football game just last month. Oh, oh, a football, football game. game. Nice. Oh, we won. <laughs> what a guy. Well, Steve, when did you last take Pam somewhere she wanted to go? Yeah, what about it, Steve? Yeah, I know. I know. Uh, last year, I took her fishing. Oh, I bet you no, love that. She likes fishing, I think. Uh, John. Yeah? When did you last tell Julie that you loved her? When was the last time I told her I loved her? Well, it's been a while, I suppose. It's been a while. Hi, honey. Wait another minute. You've got to find a way to tell her you love her today. From the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. however, began at the 22, clipping. Gary Miller cracked for a first down, picking up eight yards on the second play of the half, but suddenly the roof caved in. Raymond was clobbered trying to pitch, and LU recovered at the Eagle 33. But the defense was awesome, and then some. On third and 13, Doug Peterson rolled out to his right, and Giff Smith had this little Indian for lunch, and the tribe had to settle for a field goal. It was their only successful field goal attempt out of about five for the afternoon. 15 to 11 the score. Still the Eagle offense was sluggish. So the defense, specifically Everett Sharp, took charge. The junior linebacker out of Lions made Doug Peterson wish he'd stayed in his teepee this day, heading this pass off at the pass and returning his second interception of the afternoon, 45 yards for a touchdown. Yeah, I felt like I had to prove something to myself as well as the coaches. I need to get out here and make the plays, work hard, and be a leader. And that's what I decided to do to begin with this week, is be a leader and work hard. And everything worked out well for me. I've never seen such a great effort from you guys. They had first downs on the 11 and fourth downs on the 50. Yes, I mean, when the offense dropped the ball, really doesn't mean anything except the defense needs to go out there and stop them. We can't look at offense like, hey, y'all not executing today. We just need to go out there and stop them. Don't let them score. Sure was a good thing they had that attitude because the offense wasn't through dropping the ball. This misfire recovered at the GSC 11 and things were looking grim. Fortunately, the defense was through letting them score. On first down, Peterson went for broke. Michael Berry made sure it was broke. On third down, a pitch went awry 
and defensive guard Tim Brown was there to ensure things went no further. And the Indians' 34-yard field goal attempt had too much lift and not enough length. Defensive coach Mike Healy was so proud he could hardly stand it, while offensive guard Sammy Twiggs knew it was time for them to start carrying their share of the load. Well, I, I thought it was, but I, I think the defense just played a great game. I, I just can't get over how well they played. They, they kept time and time again uh, getting you guys out of, a, out of a real jam, and then all of a sudden it clicked for you. What, was the, what do you think was the turning point? I think the turning point was when Coach Stowers got the offense over together and said, look, our defense is playing its off, and uh, <laughs> y'all aren't getting after it. And he said, get after it, and I felt like that motivated us, and that's what did motivate us. I think that our assistant coaches here have done a great job, and I've made mention this to other people. You know, Coach, Coach John Pate with the defensive line, Coach Spangler and Coach Gerard. They, uh, we've taken, we graduated nine seniors off last year's defensive team, and I think we're playing five freshmen and either three or four sophomores with a new scheme. Now, the work that goes into putting a new scheme in and taking a bunch of players that haven't even played nor played that scheme and playing the way that they're playing right now, it's, it amazes me. I'm in shock. <laughs> um, but I'll take it. Yeah. Won't we all? That's when it happened. On the next to the last play of the third period, Raymond uncorked the backbreaker to Tony Belzer, 55 yards upfield. And between two defenders, somehow Tony made the catch. Fullback Lester Eford knifed his way to the one. And two plays later, E.T. phoned home, beginning a 21-point fourth quarter. And defensive tackle Darren Alford knew they'd done the job. We had to pin it back and go after And uh, defense held long enough for, for the offense to... To, to get their momentum, confidence built up, and they did a, a, a heck of a job second half. Well, then after another Ernest Thompson TD, Ken Burnett teamed up with split back Daryl Hopkins for the icing on the cake, and Southern came away with a much needed 43 to 11 victory. And with a hello from ATO, Herc will be back with final comments after this. We're young, but we're not children. Over 100,000 girls, 15 and under, become pregnant in America every year. A lot of people are having sex at younger ages, and they're not really being responsible about it, and they end up pregnant. It's like every day you hear a new person is pregnant, and every day it's a different age, too. I'm going to be tied to this baby the rest of my life, because he made a mistake, and so did I. You know, I still have a lot of growing up I have to do. And now I have to grow up before my baby gets here. If he doesn't see me, that's one thing, but I think he at least should see his baby. Children having children, a problem for all of us. To help in your community, write the Children's Defense Fund, 122 C Street Northwest, Washington, D.C., 2001. There's hardly a corner of the world where a Peace Corps volunteer is making a difference right now. You can join them. They're opening hearts and opening minds, building bridges and bridging cultures, sharing skills and sharing themselves, bringing new life to deserts and fighting disease. The Peace Corps is leaving behind more than a new crop, a new forest, or a nourished child. It's leaving behind the people you've helped to help themselves, shaping their future as well as your own. No matter what your skill, you don't know how much you have to offer until you offer it. Take home a world of experience and leave behind something that will last for generations. Peace Corps, the toughest job you'll ever love. The Northeast Louisiana game was, um, I would say, a, a game of just an incredible effort and some real turnarounds on some big plays, Irk, and a just absolutely fantastic play from the defense today when, and came through when it looked like the chips were really down. Before I forget it, let me say that this game today was really won by our defensive team. Uh, as a result of some fumbles that Northeast Louisiana gain close down. If our guys hadn't come through and played great, great defense, 
we probably would have gotten beat. We made some big, big plays on offense, but we were sporadic. We uh, didn't have any consistency. We'd go for a while and make a bunch of boo-boos, and then we'd make a big play, and then we'd repeat that process. Thank goodness for the defense. Well, a couple of times, I think this is, it seems to be characteristic of, of not only this defense, but some you've had in the past, Eric, where teams would get a first down on the 11 and fourth down on the 50. I mean, it was just, and it went that way a couple of times today. Bill, I hope that remains characteristic. <laughs> I can't remember those other times that you're referring to, but, well, yes, I can a little bit. That's, that's what you call great defense, when they can get the ball well within field goal range and well within scoring touchdown range, and then you turn them away with nothing. And, uh... On more than one occasion, our guys did that again. We talked about the big plays. First of all, going into the locker room when it looked like we might be down eight to seven, we suddenly pulled the big play with Carl Miller. Then after the defense had made a couple of good plays and we'd been sputtering there in the third period, we hit the big uh, pass to Tony Belzer and it looked like the floodgates opened from there. That's right. You know, I got the feeling all along, even halfway through the fourth quarter, that we were involved in a tough, tough football game. And I think we were, except the gap scoring gap between us and them, and them continued to, to grow. Uh, when the score was, what, 35 to 11 or, or whatever, then I began to feel that we had enough room to work with there and uh, we couldn't lose the game. But believe you me, it took me that long to get that feeling. The crowd was terrific today and you put on a good show for them. We, we did that and uh, I just, I, I can't be too high in my praise for our guys who use this as a payback day. The team that helped take the national championship away from them and Northeast ret retained it. Um, they got their share of revenge and it came at a great time. It stopped a two game losing streak. We've got ourselves in, in pretty good shape now. We're four and two and we've got a chance. And all we have ever asked for is just another opportunity to play. And we've got that at home next week against Bethune-Cookman. And thank goodness we have it at home next week. Absolutely, thank <laughs> goodness for that. Okay, Eric, we'll see you there. And congratulations again on a super effort in front of the largest crowd we've ever had here. Thank you, Bill, see you next week. All right, sir. And that's it for the Eric Russell Show for this week. Thanks for joining us. For everyone associated with the show, I'm Bill Edwards from Paulson Stadium. We'll see you next Sunday night for highlights of the Bethune-Cookman game. Good night. This has been the Eric Russell Show, featuring highlights of Georgia Southern Football 88. This sports special has been brought to you by Hardee's. We're out to win you over. By Eastern Airlines, we earn our wings every day. By Franklin Chevrolet of Statesboro, home of the Franklin value. And by Coastal Bank, your personal financial expert. This sports special has been produced by WJCL-TV in conjunction with the Hardee's Georgia Southern Sports Network.